she work session regular meeting of the Township Council is called to order we're just coming out of executive session okay okay so we are coming out of executive session which uh, we started early today for the sole purpose of the items of personnel get it right township manager and I uh, will go over that in just a moment so uh, when the subject of that executive session which is pretty much now is over those minutes will be made public fairly soon uh, we're <laughs> I, lost, yeah, I lost, lost my place almost please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation which will be given by Councilman James Vassanella Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us take a few moments of silence to each seek in our own way whatever sources of inspiration will grant us the strength and power in our thoughts and our decisions to be for the benefit of all people at all times. Amen. Okay, just that to be technical, I didn't have us vote out of executive session. Is there a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. Second. Moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion is carried. We are out of executive session. Sure. Okay. So for our explanation of that executive session, I'll ask De Deputy Mayor Phil Kramer, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so that was um, the uh, termination of our manager search. Uh, if um, well, at, we had a special meeting uh, a week ago or so, and at that special meeting, we voted to make an offer to Mr. Robert Bornlocker, um, a, the position for township manager. From that point, we had to settle on terms, and that executive session was about settling on the terms of his contract. Uh, we agreed to terms, and he agreed to terms, and about um, four and a half minutes ago, <laughs> he signed the contract, and according to what we had passed a week ago, we said he becomes township manager uh, the moment he signs the, count, the uh, contract. So I would like to introduce, for the first time in public, <laughs> the new township manager of Franklin Township, Mr. Robert Vornlocker. Uh, Thank we, you, Deputy Mayor. Do, do I do get we, to flip do, my name plate up now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, do we swear him in, or he just? Um, he can swear at me. But is there a, I, uh, Madam Clerk? Is there a swearing in? Yeah. Do we take a vote, Deputy Mayor? Yeah, we don't. Uh, we don't. Sw no, we don't no, swear no, one in. Okay. The, so the answer is that we do have to. We have a resolution right. to to right. Um, right. confirm the terms. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, the resolution, I guess, is for the terms of the contract, and Mr. Mayor, why don't you okay. just call for the... Thanks. So, is, <laughs> is there a motion for approval of the terms of the contract as uh, we spoke about in executive session? So it moved. In front of us. Pardon me. Second. Moved and seconded. I'll even ask for a roll call. Madam Clerk, please. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Here. Deputy Mayor Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Regan? Yes. Councilwoman <laughs> Sherman? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Oh, let me add up. Okay. Resolution passes. Congratulations, <laughs> Lieutenant Bornlocker. It's official now. I can say. Oh, my God. No, we do not. Oh, no, okay. Mr. Vornlocker? 
What yes, have, Deputy Mayor. What have you done for us so far? <laughs> I, I, I believe we'll discuss that in the executive session at the end of the meeting, but I guess okay. it's time to get to work now. <laughs> excellent, excellent. <laughs> okay, so we are following along on our agenda. Feel free to get the agendas. They're over here by the clerk, Ms. McCarthy, Excuse along with some associated resolutions and ordinances. You can get them off our website, and usually the weekend before, you can see them so you know what's happening at our meetings. We're now, now at item number six <laughs> on the agenda, which is our proclamations and commendations. And the first ones are for St. Matthias Church. So if Councilman Basnella and Councilman Regan will join me, and then we'll... Not my specialty. Okay, so this is really a special privilege for me, and I'm, I'm sure for the rest of our council. And this is not to take away from any other religious institution within Franklin, um, but tonight we celebrate St. Matthias and the contributions they've made to our community. And the reason we're doing so is because it's a 50th Jubilee. Um, so I'm going to read a proclamation first and a couple quick words from Councilman Regan and myself and then we'll have the representatives come up. Okay, proclamation. Whereas the Church of St. Matthias is celebrating its 50th anniversary of the establishment of the parish and the installation of the first pastor, William H. McKenna, on June 8, 1962 by the Most Reverend George W. R. STD, Bishop of Trenton, and whereas the first mass celebrated the solemnized the first communion of 161 children on May 8, 1965, was a culmination of years of planning and executing all the aspects of bringing together all the hearts, minds, and energy of parishioners and staff. And whereas the sixth pastor of St. Matthias, Reverend Douglas J. Hefner, has embraced and expanded the spiritual, educational, and social programs created by his predecessors to encourage, encourage parishioners to live the stewardship life. Now therefore, we, Brian D. Levine, Mayor, and Councilman James Vassanella, and Councilman Brian G. Regan, the Township Council of the Township of Franklin County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, and the citizens of the Township of Franklin join together to acknowledge the last 50 years and the continuing service to the residents and community of the Township of Franklin and wish the staff and parishioners of the Church of St. Matthias happy 50th anniversary and best wishes for God's continued blessings and grace. Give me my reading glasses I don't have. But Lynn Grace, who, uh, Erica Morold, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, uh, pastor council, pastoral council co-chairs, Sister Amada Sheena, pastoral associate, and Chris Davidson, pastoral council and youth minister, if you can please come forward and receive this proclamation and say a couple words. First, let me say that I bring regrets from our pastor, Father Doug Heffner, who couldn't be here this evening because he had a former um, parish commitment this evening. So on behalf of Father Doug and the entire community, Catholic community of St. Matthias, we proudly accept this proclamation. And it is our hope and our prayer that 
as the Catholic community of St. Matthias embarks on the second half of a century, we hope that we can continue to be a beacon of light in service to the residents of the Franklin Township and its community. Thank you so much. Well, uh, this certainly is a pleasure for me and part of celebration as uh, St. Matthias has been my faith community since I moved down here in 87. Uh, my daughter's 25 now. She was just born then, so uh, it's very important to me. Uh, St. Matthias truly has, uh, is, plays a significant part uh, in my life uh, and my family's life as our children have uh, you know, grown up and, and gone through um, all the sacraments in St. Matthias. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be an active member of, of St. Matthias, serving on the pastoral council and serving as a minister of hospitality and at various times actually in the choir. Um, so um, it really is a pleasure to be up here to join in the celebration. Um, because it is such an important and, and what the contribution we make to the community as a whole, uh, especially in some of the services such as the St. Vincent uh, de Paul Society uh, and how they help the poor is, is truly uh, a tremendous um, uh, contribution to the town and the, and the food bank. So um, really, again, just congratulations. Um, we'll see. Uh, there's a dinner Saturday night. Uh, that we'll be having where many of us will be getting together and sharing that. So again, on behalf of, um, really is my honor and pleasure on behalf of the township uh, to be up here and uh, to celebrate um, this event with, with St. Matthias. Thanks. If I could just reflect for one moment, one of my first memories as a child, literally two or three years old, was stomping around the mud when they were constructing the church and we're talking back like <laughs> the very early 1960s. And uh, that was a very vivid memory for me. And having had the privilege of going there for eight years and having now my son go there is uh, just something you don't think of over the years until you reflect back on the fact of 50 years of service to the community. And I remember being an altar boy um, at Father McKenna's funeral. And I mention that because we're all moved by things in life, events, but the first funeral I experienced at a very young age, weddings, all the things that bring joy and sorrow, I experienced through St. Matthias. And that, I feel honored. Thank you. Uh, you've welcomed me at St. Matthias with open arms on all the many occasions I've been there, the happy times, the sad funerals. And also, you've opened the schools, I've addressed the Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts there, and invited me to Super Sundays, and very kind to let me ride in one of the good old cars. And then all the, our, our firefighters, 9-11 memorials have been there in all the many ways. So yes, you've certainly served those who are part of your spiritual community, but the town as a whole has benefited also. And some people have told me, and some very quietly, because it's personal, of St. Vincent de Paul, or the nice things that have happened, or they had to go to the food bank for a while when things just weren't right. And uh, those are things I know most of the public never knows, and it's, that's kind of okay because it's someone's personal business, and I know you give without thinking that you, you gotta trumpet it to everyone, but you, you certainly deserve that, and a good part of our community, and I, I, uh, Hope you keep giving me invitations, and I'll keep on, I'll keep on coming there. And my personal affection to Father Doug, also, who's always been extremely kind to me, and I've seen him on the scene at the good times and the bad times. Well, I would say the bad times, the heartfelt times, and the good times, too. So again, thank you very much from all of our 60-plus thousand residents and tens of thousands of people who come through here every day working. OK, thanks. Good evening. Uh, we had one, um, 
we had one proclamation that we're going to hold off, and that was to RPM, our developer here in Franklin Township. So we're going to hold that until the first meeting in November. So without ado, we'll do the Sisters Network. Can I have all the Sisters Network members please come up, please? While they're coming up, I'd like to say congratulations to St. Matthias as well for your 50 years in our community. I've loved going to services there. I love Father Doug. I think he's missed his calling. He's also a comedian. He's not just Father Doug. And he's told me he would adopt me anytime I wanted to become a member of your church because I'm currently a member of First Baptist. But I have to say that you've been an anchor to our community, a fortress, a very strong community partner. And I can't imagine what Franklin Township would be without St. Matthias. God bless you. Do the shameless plug first. Okay. All right. Call it, call it a shameless plug. Sister. Okay, so th this is a shameless plug, I was told. <laughs> Behind me is our sisters network, uh, the, the group of their leadership. And on Thursday, November 1st, from 7.30 to 10.30 a.m. and from 4 to 7 p.m., they will be having an open house reception. And it's very important to stop by all medical personnel, corporate executives, community leaders, residents, uh, businesses here in the, in the township, you are cordially invited to attend the reception and the, the, the whole reason why we, would, we want you to come by and see what they're doing because they support, they're a support organization that provides education, awareness, and services to uninsured and underinsured and underserved women in our, in our community. So please visit and stop by. They do have a website and it's www.snc nj.org so sncnj is sisters network central nj.org so we're very very happy to have our sisters here with us today and i will read this proclamation and the proclamation reads whereas the sisters network of central new jersey an affiliate chapter of sisters network incorporated incorporated was formed in january 2000 and serves as a critical resource for women battling breast cancer whereas African-American women have the highest mortality rate of any race, the Sisters Network of Central New Jersey mission is to alert family, residents, communities, and the media to the devastation that breast cancer causes in our African-American community. Whereas the Sisters Network of Central New Jersey has provided 12 years of breast, breast health advocacy, education, and survivor support to Central New Jersey and our community. And whereas the Sisters Network of Central Jersey provides many outreach programs targeted to the underserved and underinsured or uninsured populations that include the Young But Not Reckless, the Silver Foxes, Corporate Breast Health Awareness Programs, GIF for Life Block Walk, Pink Ribbon Initiative, Health Summit and Breakfast, the Mammography Outreach Program, Women's Networking Brunch, Breast Cancer Assistant Program and the 5K Race Walk for Life in Franklin Township. So there, now, therefore, I, on behalf of our mayor, Brian Levine, Councilman Carl Wright, and our council members, and also on behalf of the Township of Franklin County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, hereby commend the Sisters Network for their tireless efforts in fighting against breast cancer and for upholding the national motto, in unity there is strength, in strength there is power, and empower there is change. And I typically don't read these word for word, but I thought it was important to read every word because that's how significant what you're doing is for our community and for the people that are being served by your services. So thank God for you and thank you very much. And this is Dorothy Reed. And I, I'm sure you have a few words. Good evening, everyone. I thank the township so much. On behalf of the entire Sisters Network organization staff and members, we thank you for this proclamation. We are just belated that you see the work that we're doing in the community that is worthwhile. We do service women. Women come to us all the time. We help them with wigs and prosthetics, meal food vouchers, and any other services that they may need to get them through their journey. Uh, most of us standing here are survivors ourselves, so we know what it takes to get through. And it's not a week or two that you're sick. Sometimes you're sick, like myself, for 10 months. So it takes a while. We're here. We thank you for recognizing us. I thank uh, Mayor Levine, Carl, um, 
<laughs> Francois <laughs> and all the others that have attended our different functions that we give. Um, we just thank you so much for supporting us and God bless you. And um, my vice president, she's never lost for words. So she can come <laughs> up, she can say a few words also. <laughs> Hi everyone, to the mayor, to all of the council members. It's really an honor to be here tonight because I remember in 2007, we sat here in anticipation because we needed commercial zoning. And we sat here and prayed, and I think when they told us we had the commercial zoning, we just yell out a scream uh, during the council meeting. So, uh, you know, we're happy about this because from the township, we usually get tax bills, water bills, <laughs> sewage bills. So we got a proclamation, <laughs> and we're happy about that. And you know, when they, uh, somebody said, when you see a turtle on top of a pole, he didn't get there by himself. And we've been very successful these years. We know that we didn't get there by ourselves. We had a, a very successful event, our walk. And not only did we have committed supporters, sponsors, but we also had the support of the Franklin Township Council. And we, that could not happen if they had not put their seal of approval on it and dotted every I and said, okay. So we just, we're in awe of everything that we're doing. We ask that they will support us and we'll just, we'll make you real proud of us. Thank you so much. And through, through the efforts of Sisters Network through the years, remember your, your walk was sort of a small thing. I think it started here at the municipal complex, stumping through the mud to the middle school, and now the high school needs to accommodate you because you spread the word on your own so much. And the uh, nice of you to give all of us an open house to your fine facility. I have nothing to say, but I'm wearing the T-shirt. <laughs> Mr. Mayor? Yes, Councilman Regan. Um, I'd like to uh, make motion to, if we could have the discussion on 11C next, as uh, you know, we have the staff here, and uh, I'd like to try to get them out as soon as possible. So I'd like to make a motion to have that move it up to become, I guess, either a 7 prime or a 6E, just <laughs> ahead of the mayor. Or I, after, I guess, after the, um, I guess after 8. Do the mayor's report, the deputy mayor's report, and then before public discussion, if we could have do that. Okay. So if that's acceptable to All council. Right. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, motion is carried. Okay, so item 11C, Councilman Regan said, due to respect for staff, it's going to be moved up to just in a moment. So now we're at item 6, mayor's report. And um, as I think was aptly predicted by uh, Councilwoman Sherman, the mug of the day is <laughs> from the Marconi Foundation. They had a, one of their uh, scholarship dinners. I, I think the Deputy Mayor, Deputy Mayor Kramer's on their board of directors, and many of us were there to uh, pr promote historical events, uh, have their scholarship, and know that Mr. Marconi had his first transatlantic communication, part of it right here in Franklin Township. For our meetings, they are generally the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month. 
July, August, and December, it's only the second Tuesday of the month. And in November, there is a shift. The council meeting will be Thursday, November 8th, and not the second Tuesday, which is November 13th. So Thursday, November 8th, and then the next meeting in uh, November goes back to the regular schedule. Been a lot of things happening in town over the last few weeks. We said Marconi had their annual event, at Navratri, which many of us also were in attendance, was at our convention center. Uh, so, uh, some of our fire companies, Somerset Fire and Rescue, Griggstown Fire Company, Elizabeth Avenue Fire Company, all had their open houses. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make all of them, just one, but I think others of us were at many of them. The uh, NAACP Freedom Fund Luncheon was held here in town for the area at First Baptist Church of Lincoln Gardens. We honored to have Congressman Pallone there in attendance. I was there and Councilwoman Sherman was there also. And uh, out of town, <coughs> also Councilwoman Sherman was at the Edison Chamber of Commerce, Southeast Asian Chamber of Commerce also sponsored in Edison at the uh, Pines Manor there. Lieutenant Governor Kim Guadagno addressed the audience there also. And and we were represented. The uh, events coming up, the Sisters Network, as was said here by Councilwoman Francois, Councilman Wright, that's a good thing to attend. They, their house open on Hamilton Street, good thing to visit. Also, November, November 11th will be Veterans Day, and we will, as always, have our Veterans Day Memorial right here in front at our Veterans Memorial at the Municipal Complex. Few things we can learn. The um, in Franklin, our uh, our schools are doing well. I'd like to congratulate the schools on the new principal there, Mr. Bevere, who seems to be doing an excellent job. I'm personally very impressed. And if you want to help out the school, also they are selling pavers so that they can help afford their stadium, so that the high school can play there all the time, which will help out the school and help us out as a town also. Elections are coming up, of course. We see it in the news. Make yourself an informed vote. Um, as I'm sure all of us know, reading about the issues is a much better way than looking at a glossy piece of literature, which is come in your mail. Now, make a note. On the major party political conventions, we in Franklin have a, trying to make a connection for us on both of them. On the Republican side, uh, the keynote speakers on both sides, Chris Christie, our governor, spoke there. And on the Democratic side, San Antonio Mayor Castro, who did a good job. It's, I found it interesting. They're a large city, but they, as I understand it for the most part, have a form of government like ours, more of a council manager form of government. And they seem to do very well there. Congratulations to both gentlemen. And just it's the 50th anniversary of St. Matthias. I'm going to look over my left shoulder to the picture on my far left of John F. Kennedy. And it's the 50th anniversary of the Cuban Missile Crisis. And I think we have to remember freedom is not always easy. And sometimes the fact that the world exists is not always something that's taken for granted. He wrote a great Pulitzer Prize winning book, Profiles in Courage, various people who were able to stand up under pressure. And as I understand it, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, certainly many ideas we're floating around everything from attack to do nothing to everything in between. And through all those opinions, he was able to wade through all of them, sometimes under pressure, to come up with, with what at the time in history has proven to be the right course of action. So that's extremely admirable, not only because he chose the right action, but he did it of his own convictions. Or did you go to so we are, if you want to know things going on in town, please check our website. We try and put as much as we can up there. For fun or announcements, I maintain my Brian Levine, Mayor Brian Levine Facebook page and Twitter, which I don't nearly get to as much as I should. And if, as always, if you have questions, complaints, I'll speak for all of us. Please email, call, visit us, tap us on the shoulder at the supermarket, and we're glad always to help you out, all of us. And that's it. That concludes the Mayor's Report. So now we have Number seven, the Deputy Mayor's Report, Deputy Mayor Phil Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Happy birthday, Councilman Regan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, oh birthday.
Okay. Okay. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Mayor. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. And now we have come to uh, what Councilman Regan had stated, removing additional fire prevention officer. Here, um, did one of the since this was discussed in financial oversight, do one of the people members want to take the lead on that? Deputy Mayor. Deputy Mayor. Bill Kramer. Okay. So uh, last night at the financial oversight meeting, we were uh, approached by uh, members of fire prevention, um, and they asked uh, to add two positions um, to uh, the fire prevention force. And we, we have the um, documentation in your packet, um, this color sheet, and uh, this sheet um, that has uh, a bit more information on it. Um, what the color sheet represents is the expenses um, of the uh, fire prevention. Um, I'm sorry, the revenue of fire prevention um, over the last several years. And while I'm sure the people at home can't see the details on this, but you can see their, their revenues are going up. Um, as I said, they're asking to add two positions. Um, and since their last position, uh, the town has grown uh, significantly. The last um, time they had anyone added to their staff was 2007, when a half position was increased to a full position. And prior to that, um, when they went from five to six was 1994. So they have, they have not been adding a great deal, but they are responsible for inspecting commercial buildings and uh, following on our ordinance that when a home is sold, checking the uh, smoke detectors. Um, the increased revenue over time is um, one because they are um, charging churches, not the same as they charge others, but there is some charge to them. Basically, the increased number of buildings uh, around town, which have significantly grown over the years. Um, and uh, also the, f the fire districts, excuse me, the fire districts have uh, been making a contribution um, to supporting the members. And the reason they make that contribution is because one of the very important um, aspects of what our fire inspectors do is cover firefighting, or at least first call to firefighting in the town. As most people know, in town, we have a volunteer fire department. Many of those dedicated people work outside of town. So during a weekday, if there is a fire call, it is just not possible for uh, the fire departments to have any type of rapid response. And with firefighting, getting that the time it takes to get the first person on the scene to assess the fire and decide this is a small fire we just need a couple guys here or we need to pull out a ladder company or more and more um, is is critical to it so having our fire prevention people assisting in that um, is a major safety factor for the town um, they there are two two categories of fire inspections that they do. One is uh, mandated by the state, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is when new commercial buildings go in, they have to uh, inspect those, um, and uh, they're inspecting them yearly uh, as well. Um, but also, the township ordinance, which I just mentioned, um, they are fighting to keep up with that, and, and they are they are 90% with that, um, so th th that is something that is difficult for them to do with their manning. Um, they will be able to do more inspections and increase revenue if they have more people uh, on. Um, so this, they are informing us that, that this will be uh, revenue neutral um, for now. Home sales are also increasing. So their uh, inspections for smoke detectors are going up. Um, 
and also complaints. They, they handle complaints when you have a problem with uh, your neighbor, some type of fire situation. Uh, they are handling those, and those are going up. So the, um, the Financial Oversight Committee uh, kind of held their feet to the fire for about a half an hour, asked several questions, many good questions from them, uh, from the Financial Oversight Committee. And what we decided unanimously was to, they're asking for two, to allow one for now, for the, and now being this coming year's budget, um, so it, it wouldn't start until January 1st, so we wouldn't have to do any transfers or finding of money. Um, and um, that next year we will revisit uh, the need for a second um, position. So the, uh, again, the recommendation of financial oversight uh, four to zero was to approve one position. Okay, Councilman <coughs> Regan, did you? Uh, you thank you, Deputy Mayor, for that fine, uh, uh, fine overview of, of the situation. So, uh, you know, basically, I think we're looking for council, and um, I would put out a motion to um, allow us to approve the uh, hiring of one fire prevention offer, officer uh, inspector starting uh, January 1st, 2013. Second that motion. I, I did have one quick oh, question. Sorry. Sure. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I would sure just we'll like do. some clarity. I know. Um, you mentioned that uh, revenue were part of the increase was due to the shared services agreement with the fire districts. Could you explain that uh, so the public understands what that was all about? And um, it, sorry, so we know it's M Mr. John House, our fire chief, fire inspector. Yes, and I have well my deputy Andrew Barardo with me. Um, in 2010, the um, township and the four fire districts, we have four different districts in Franklin, entered into a shared services agreement. Um, the township needed some additional funds for our department. They got that by through this agreement. It's currently at 82500 per year, um, spread out among those four districts. The districts needed some things in return. As um, Deputy Mayor Kramer alluded to, the most uh, critical function that we provide them is with daytime fire response. Um, while in the past we tried to help them when we could with that agreement, we are obligated to send them at least two inspectors on every single call and the entire department on any um, what we call real emergencies. And what I mean by a real emergency is it could be a working fire, it could be an extrication, it, um, you know, a serious call. We're not, we're not sending the entire department to ABC company for a fire alarm when 90% of the time that those alarms turn out to be, you know, something that can be handled with a minimal crew. Whereas if there's an actual emergency, like I described, they need all that manpower and we give them all that. Um, <clears throat> we also guarantee to them um, that to the extent that possible, we would provide every, all of our inspections completed, that we would provide them with pre-plan information and things like that. And that's what it amounts to. The benefit to the districts is that they're getting that manpower at a very reduced rate. And lastly, and I, I know the council has heard me say this, the benefit to the taxpayers in this plan is it's the cheapest fire protection that they can buy. They're getting, um, for lack of a better term, a quasi-public, a quasi-paid department for very minimal amount of money. It's costing the districts $82,500, and they get, in essence, seven daytime people during the day. Um, there's not a, a, you can't even hire seven people for that amount of money. Great. All right, thank you very much. Sure. Um, Mayor? Council. Just real quick Council before we take the now. vote. Please. Yeah, I remember back when that situation was being arranged, um, while other departments were actually losing people through attrition or layoffs, 
that was one way to keep your department from losing anybody through attrition and layoffs, but Correct. without gouging further into what was a bare bones budget, and it actually gave an opportunity from how I see it, and if you agree, I don't know, that we're able to kind of tighten and actually make better our, our overall emergency services re and responders by that. So out of that budget crisis came a new template for which we now can build on and are doing so with the addition here if we indeed vote to add that fire uh, inspector. Yes, and to, we have had other towns contacting us to try to copy the, the model that Frank I heard some about that. So I just want to acknowledge that out of things like budget crisis is some innovative techniques that now that, that really are, are helpful and keeping our safety up to par. Thank you, John. Okay. Are there questions, comments? Okay. There's, what, was there a motion for that? Yes. yes. Second. Okay, move this and second. And it's been okay. seconded. Oh, yeah, you can buy a voice vote. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor of uh, proving the one position for now, and as we said in the committee, you'll come back to us with how that's working for you. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? I should go slowly. Opposed? <laughs> abstain? Motion is carried. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very, very much. much. We appreciate it. And and thank you for good moving us upward. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. One at a time. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your time coming here. So now we go to item number nine on the agenda, public discussion. This will be the only time during the meeting that anyone can speak to us on an item of just any general nature. As is our policy, uh, we ask you to limit your comments to five minutes, which will be timed when you hear a tone go off. That means three minutes has elapsed. And after multiple tones, that means your five minutes has elapsed. We'll ask you to wrap up your thoughts. Please address all your comments to the council. And if we can answer it uh, right here quickly, we will. If we have to get back to you, we'll certainly do that. So is um, please note that our uh, we are being audio and videotaped on our cable access channel during the whole time. So is there a motion to open the meeting for public discussion? So moved, Mayor. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion is carried. Meeting is open for public discuss discussion on any item of interest to the public. Anyone interested in speaking, please raise your hand. And when I recognize you, please come to the podium and give us your name and address. Yes, sir. And then, Mr. Tibbs, you can certainly go next. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Is that okay? Yes, sir. Good evening, council members. Uh, my name is Jamel Brown. I live at 66 Winston Drive, right down the road. Um, my concern tonight is I've been on Winston Drive for about three years now, uh, since 2009, and uh, I live on a part of the road that's somewhat curved. And a lot of times throughout the evening or throughout the week, we hear cars going very fast down our road. Um, now, the speed of the cars is an issue, and that's fine. Uh, but it's more the reckless driving. And so when we, since 2009, we moved into our home. Um, we've had 14 traffic accidents on Winston Drive, which is just oh a mile goodness. long. All right? Wow. Um, within about 100 yards of my home, on either direction, we've had 40% of those accidents. So I, uh, the story that broke the camel's back was on September 19th, uh, we were woken up at about midnight uh, to a big crash. And I ran outside and there was a car that had taken out half my tree and was about 20 feet from my house in my front lawn. Wow. Um, this is the second time a car has been in my lawn. Uh, the first time it was in my lawn and then it kind of sped off and we didn't know what to do about that. Um, my neighbor across the street has had his car hit twice. Um, I had a car in my neighbor's lawn to the, to the right of me and to the opposite um, across the street to the left of me. So. It's an issue for us. It's a, it's a really serious issue for us. And I don't know what can be done about it, but I would just like, yes. I just. Councilman would, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor. Sure. If nothing else, and, and our manager, who is our traffic safety coordinator for years, right. may have something to say, but I'd like to just simply uh, make sure it gets on the next public safety committee's uh, agenda. And um, we can delve it into detail now, but perhaps yeah. our man manager may have something to add tonight. That would be appreciated. And I can kind of talk to a little bit more about it. So I. Um, <clears throat> so after the September 19th accident, I called the township to get the, 
get the motor vehicle accident reports because I know there's a lot of accidents on our road. Um, and I was talking to one of the sergeants just about kind of what we could do. And look, I, I, I love this township. I own a home here. I have two businesses here. Um, I love St. Matthias, a sisters network, that kind of stuff you don't get everywhere, you know? This is a wonderful township. Um, so I really want this issue addressed. Um, I have a little one now, and it's kind of one of these things where my front yard can't be a place to play, you know? Um, granted, this happened, the accident in my home happened at midnight, uh, but it's dark now at 6 o'clock, um, and it's damp at 6 o'clock, so it can happen at any time. Um, so I called the to get the reports, and um, I didn't get very far with the um, with the officer who gave me the reports. You know, I said I don't know what to do about it. Uh, maybe we can have more police presence. Well, he said we can have more police presence because policemen need a line of sight, and our road is curved, and and that's fine. And I don't know that. Um, I said, well, maybe we can talk about road humps. Well, road humps won't work because once we put them in, people want them taken out. Um, and I said, well, people routinely go 40, 45 miles an hour on my road. And, and, that's not, and I'm not stretching that. They go 45 miles an hour on my road. And he says, well, I patrol that road and people go 40, 42 miles an hour. I said, so we're splitting here between three miles per hour, <laughs> which is just, I, I don't want to have this discussion about three miles per hour. I want something to be done. Um, so the point I'm making is, is that I, I would just like to kind of figure out if we can open up some discussions about the safety in our road. I know Councilwoman Sherman mentioned last meeting when I was sitting here about Magnolia Road and kind of the residents mm -hmm. there having kind of similar issues. Magnolia Road is a half mile long and they've had one accident in the same time we've had 14. Now, uh, yes. No, go ahead. Yeah. I'm agreeing uh, with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's thought. fine. Um, and look, all of the 14 accidents weren't um, <laughs> tragic accidents, right? Some, a couple of them were, you know, I hit my own car going into my driveway, something <laughs> like that, right? Um, but the six that happened in like three years here that have been within 100 yards of my house have been property damage or, you know, something to that nature. And it's just kind of something. So my, um, so we petitioned the folks that live kind of on that stretch, and everybody's kind of enthusiastic about getting something done, and they've signed a petition to say, hey, we want at least a discussion to open up about it. Um, okay. So I would like Ms. to just, yes. And Mr. Brent, did you have something in front of you? Uh, yeah. Okay, do you want to, you can give that to our clerk and she can and I have the act distribute that to us. And, and also, as, yeah, as you saw uh, earlier, yep. we, we just voted in our new township manager. As, <laughs> as, as well, Councilman Vassanella <laughs> said, used to be our traffic safety officer in the police department. Sure, so I also have a picture of the tree and how so, close the car kind of came to the house. So, so Mr. Can, Vornlocker, you'll either take um, his number or give him yours and... Absolutely. Yeah, work so with Mr. Brown. That's really it. I don't have much else. I no, just want important. some concern. No, no, that, that is. Some, some, and uh, so you'll certainly, you'll, he'll, yep. so, Mr. Uh, Vornlocker will be our point man. Yes. I was, right? I was just going to say, we just wore in a new township manager. So we'd like who to Who used from to him. work for the police. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why are we going right like to Why are we going to mess around with a committee Right. When you can send it to the police department. Sure. He knows what he's going to do for traffic. Sure. Then come back to our committee on public safety and say, hey, this is what I did. This is what I looked at. Sure. And there's anything more, you know, speed hump, you know, yeah. traffic cameras. Some, I don't know. I don't know either. He'll know. I right, He'll know right, what to right. do. That's what, yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. I, don't, yeah. I just don't want it to be swept under the yeah. rug. I don't know what is possible. Yeah. And maybe those things aren't, but something has to be. There you go. Something. We're done. With the and, um, Send it to him. No, I will do. And uh, the park looks great, by the way. The uh, new Middle Bush Park looks great. Oh, oh thanks. Right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank so you. I, I appreciate that. No, no problem. That was for you. Yeah, if that's a, if that's a petition, to give it to the clerk. You can get a copy. And then you're... You can exchange name and, and number. Mr. Vaughn Locker would like to say a few yeah, words. Yeah, I was going to say. Okay. All right. Thank you. Lieutenant, You're from go ahead. I would. I, Mr. Brown, if you just stop. When, when you're done, just I'll give you my card so you can give me a call. I, I, I think that you were here at the last council meeting when we discussed Magnolia Road. I was. I've watched a couple on TV and then I came. Okay. Well, well, very much like what we did for Magnolia Road and what we're in the midst of doing for Magnolia Road is conducting a traffic study yeah. to, to determine where the speed problems exist and what type of uh, you know, methods we can use to abate the problem. I mean, we can certainly look at Winston Drive for the same thing. I'm assuming you're in the in the Kingsbridge Foxwood stretch, right in the curves there. Uh, not Foxwood. It's uh, Montrose, uh, Kingsbridge Montrose. Kingsbridge Montrose. Okay. Uh, yeah. in, in the curves. Uh, so, uh, you know. By all means, give me a call tomorrow sure. um, at your convenience. Uh, my number's on the card. 
and we can get the process be, you know, started. The speed hump uh, policy is one that I wrote, so I certainly am familiar with it. We can look at that as one of the alternatives, but there's many alternatives. So, and, and there certainly are other alternatives. So we can start to take a look and see where we can go to try to, uh, to deal with the problem. I, it was my, I just, just as, a, as a side note, uh, about 27 years ago, when I was on my very first midnight shift as a police officer, my very first speeding ticket was on Winston Drive. So I won't say that I don't know that there isn't a problem on Winston Drive. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Tibbs. Pleasure as always. John H. Tibbs, 25 Parkside. Uh, I just have a couple of things. I'm kind of glad to be here. I haven't seen you guys for a while. <laughs> You're welcome. We missed you. Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been bogged down in voter registration now, man. I, I did a Good fantastic That's job. That's wonderful. Uh, I think, you know. I'm going to interrupt you and say Mr. Tibbs registered 210 people to vote. Yes. That's outstanding. Wow. That's wonderful. Outstanding. Very nice. I did. And I was contributed to factor to many others. Uh, just a couple of things. I, I, I just wanted to uh, mention I wanted to thank the Sisters Network because uh, I support them most of the time whenever they have anything, uh, they're doing anything. Most of them are from First Baptist Church, by the way, so I know most of them. And uh, St. Matthias, uh, I wanted to thank them too because every year uh, they support my kids. All, every year they support the kids. Some of the low economic kids from my area, they uh, allow some of the kids to have some free carnival time. I think, mm -hmm. Francois, I think you know about that, yes, right? Now, I wanted to thank them, but it was they left already. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, just a quick couple quick things, um, uh, some of the senior citizens was talking about being this park site has been built up now and all the way down on the side of the park. Mm -hmm. They have been complaining about the cars speeding up and down Mark Street. Now, they have suggested some uh, road bumps and so forth, but I, I, that could be okay if, 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 uh, uh, if they're deemed necessary. But I've seen some signs down in New Brunswick. They simply said uh, something to the effect of, our kids are playing here now, will you please slow down? And I think it had a major effect. It was just a beautiful signs, and I think that would have a major effect on Market Street. But I think something should be done, being that the housing is finished now, and you have thousands of ki more kids down in that area right now, especially on Market Street, adjacent to the park. You know, uh, I wanted to mention that, and uh, I heard the gentleman talking about um, uh, Magnolia Avenue. I mean, uh, Winston Drive. Uh, Councilman Wright, I, I was asked to tell you this, ask you this. You know the little short street from the new Mark Street now, they built Chester Avenue all the way through to Hampton Street. And the potholes on that street are so big that a couple cars fell in the potholes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how big the potholes in that little part right there. So I was asked to ask you, please, if you can get the, the township or the public waste department to please fill those potholes just on that Chester Avenue. You got that on your menu? Got it. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate it. Uh, let me see. Oh, and uh, I want to have a little narrative here. The community garden in Parkside is, 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 is doing well. They, they've struggled. It was a big struggle this year in terms of getting the people assigned to plots, and they got the plots. And they grew the tomatoes and cabbages and some uh, callaloo. I understand the callaloo is a Jamaican uh, yes. a product or something. Right. And they've had a wonderful time. But, of course, you know, we had a lot of problems with the irrigation and so forth. The irrigation is in now. And I wanted to ask you guys to please support the little proposal that we have written up for the, for the community garden in terms of our needs in the oncoming year of 2013. Uh, it's been written up. Uh, I am to present it to the Environmental Commission on the day before Election Day. And you know I'm going to be busy, so, but uh, I'm going to try my best to be there. Uh, uh, Mr. Al Levine had said he would go with me 
to pre pre present, pre pre uh, present this proposal to the to the uh, environmental council. And the guys down there, if any of you guys ever come to Parkside, I wish you would look and see what they have done in the community garden. They have now cleaned it out completely. I mean, it, all the weeds and, the, and the, the, the things that the recreation department had left for us to do, it's been done. So in terms of they preparing themselves for the seeding for, for next uh, spring of the year. So when that comes up, I hope you guys, Debbie Mitchell and so forth, that when, they, when, they, when the police get to the hope you guys will support that particular thing. That's what we're doing now. Okay. Uh, Carisha, that's fine. Oh, and uh, Mr. Kramer, uh, uh, Councilman Kramer, I uh, hopefully when you guys decide to uh, study the recreational budget, that some of the community folks within the pool area, which lives in the pool area, would be invited so that it can possibly share their concerns of the possibility of increasing <coughs> the time why youngsters can swim in the pool during the summer. That's something Ms. Osipowicz is already looking at for next year's budget. That's, that's already part of the plan. Yes, sir. But being that it was grudgingly done before that happened, that I think that some input from the community would be better served Johnny body proposal I sit on the youth services commission so when we have that on the agenda I'll make sure I reach out to you so you can come and talk about it thank you okay thank you thank you uh, that's pretty much all I had thank you very much just uh, one uh, yes, suggestion for you Johnny when you go to the environmental commission suggest to them that we have a grants writer and that uh, your program probably would qualify for some of the grants that are out there. And uh, if they don't have funding themselves, that they should make it uh, a project to be submitted to the grants I writer. I think they already did. Perhaps I think they already have one. Well, we're working within one of them now. Well, the, I don't. I know Deborah is involved with the CDGB grants. Right. This is not. This is a broader. Grant oh, yes, program. I understand. All right. Just yes. just remind them okay. that uh, if there are funding issues, that they should work with uh, our clerk and Marie um, and and talk about the opportunities for broader grants. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wish to speak? See no one come forward. May or motion to close the public portion of the meeting. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion is carried. Public discussion is closed for this meeting. Thank you very much for that. We always welcome your comments. We now come to item number 10 on the agenda, council comments and reports. I think we start this way. This, I think we start this way. Oh, this way. Okay. Well, Councilman Ted Chase. Whatever. I don't have too much to report. We have a Public Works Committee meeting scheduled for next week. Uh, just to add one more thing about the uh, community garden at Naaman Williams Park, uh, John Walker will be putting in a prefabricated tool shed. That's the last item uh, really coming out of the CBDG grant. Um, you know, already purchased it. It's just a question of putting in some footings and erecting the prefabricated shed, and that'll be a place where people can store their tools. And he was also, I think he has wood to lay out a few more plots within the garden. Of course, we really need somebody to take charge of the garden at uh, Pine Grove School. Uh, which was originally Gene Unger's baby, but he's left town or leaving town, and we um, just haven't had anyone step forward to take charge of that one and, and run it, as John Walker and Johnny Tibbs between them have done for the uh, Naaman Williams Park Garden. And I would 
also certainly support the idea of increased use of the pool uh, at Neyman Williams Park. We have the pool. We ought to be using it as much as possible, however possible may be uh, defined. Um, I drove down the recently paved Copper Mine Road. It was a real pleasure. Uh, the contractor, like many contractors, has left up one sign from uh, when the road was being worked on that ought to be removed. But, and I think that's everything. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Carl Wright. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is small. Yes. Take off your shoes, everyone. Here, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> um, where do I start? The land use uh, meeting and the admin meeting are scheduled for this week, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So we'll report back on the first week, the second week of November, for those two uh, issues. Uh, throw something else on the manager's plate. Battle Place was supposed to have a vacation because um, they were not putting in the street. So I know it's been kicked around, but I haven't seen or, or anything like that. The vacation of Camden Avenue? I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Battle Place. We passed the ordinance, right? You passed the Yeah. Yeah, but nothing went out because they haven't received anything. No letter. Mike. We passed the ordinance, and I believe it was sent to the county clerk's office. Anne Marie, am I correct? Have we gotten a recorded copy back? I'm not sure. Okay, so if you can let, let me know whether that is, um, okay. but I don't think there's anything else that has okay. to be done. Um, we revised the tax maps, and we're done. There it is. Be because See, what, ha what, what there's the common confusion is uh -huh. that when you vacate a street, we then deed it from the township to them. That's not what happens. When a, a vacation is the vacating of the public's right of way. Okay. When you vacate the public's right of way, that portion of that sh that that street goes to those property owners automatically as a matter of law. Mm -hmm. So it's the the recordation of the street vacation that does it. So all that'll happen now is that Tom Zelnick will update the map to show that that's now part of those other properties. Okay, because um, one of the questions was one wanted to move the fence, mm -hmm. and he called and said, "Well, I don't know if I'm supposed to move my fence so that." If something was to happen on the other side of this fence, mm -hmm. he wouldn't be held liable, anything like that. Well, well, what I what I always tell people, and it's not our it's not ours to do, is I, mm -hmm. it's always a good idea for them to get a, their own survey. Okay. So that they can stake the corners and they know where it is, especially if they're going to put a fence up. Okay. That that would be my my suggestion. But but as a matter of law, we've done everything legally we need to do. Okay. That take that one off, and also. Um, Franklin Township Pop Warner. Uh, you hear them, you see them on Sunday playing football, and I just want to commend them because for the month of October, they wore pink. Whether it was the socks, the hat, the armbands, somewhere on them this month, there was pink in honor of uh, breast, can breast Cancer Month. Also, um, the sheriff safety tips for kids uh, I was wondering if we can put that on a website for Halloween because it gives the kids and the parents what goes on, uh, how to be uh, safe when you go out to Halloween, and with the uh, abductions, partial abductions, wannabe abductions in, in New Jersey, I think we need to put that on the schedule for people to see. And if everyone would bear with me for just one second, I have a housing report. Um, Mayor, if you go to somebody else and then flip back to me, I'll have that housing report. Okay. Thank you. Councilwoman Rosalind Sherman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I've been a pretty busy person this <laughs> la last couple of weeks. I didn't realize it until the mayor started listing the places where he had been and I had been between the NAACP luncheon, the Hollywood uh, Firehouse, the Navartri celebration, um, the uh, Chamber event in Edison, and the Marconi event. And that's 
a bunch of stuff, and everything I did was enjoyable. Um, the mayor and I didn't always cross paths, but he may have been at other places while I was doing my thing, as you heard. Um, but in addition to that, there are a couple of other things that I've been uh, keeping myself busy with. One was a, a very um, um, gratifying visit with our Congressman Rush Holt to one of our manufacturing organizations here in Franklin Township, a company called Promotion in Motion. Uh, the name isn't going to tell you anything about the company. It was actually started by the owner of the company in his dorm, uh, and he was basically doing advertising on trucks. He's a marketing guy. But that's not anything what they do today. They make candy. They make an enormous amount of candy. Uh, they, they have just actually put it uh, in another building uh, in which they will be um, making candy or chocolate-covered nuts and peanuts. They wanted to separate that from their regular manufacturing site because of um, uh, allergic issues. So it was wonderful to see their facility. It's growing. Uh, we're very pleased and very lucky to have PIM here in Franklin Township, and we thank Congressman Holt for coming here and honoring this company uh, and uh, spending time with their staff. And it was fun for me, too. And I, I got some candy for my grandson. <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition to that, the uh, Cultural Arts uh, Council continues to hold very, very worthwhile programs. The most recent one was this Sunday. We had poet Mark Doty there, who is, I, I don't recall exactly the name, but National um, Authors Prize. I, I'm sure I've said that totally wrong, but he's, he's quite well known. He's won national awards for his poetry. Uh, the event was held at the uh, Van Lu Sudam House, which is a lovely setting for something like this. It's relatively intimate. We can only hold 50 people. And um, it, the event has uh, grown from the one we had two weeks ago. There'll be another one in two more weeks, and we're, we're going to have poetess uh, Maxine Sussman at the event. So if anyone is interested in attending this, please let me know um, and contact me through my email or phone number here at the township. Uh, there also was the uh, event in the town where uh, through the county, actually, historic homes were being visited. And one of the uh, Meadows homes, the um, Wyckoff home, was on that uh, circuit. I uh, did go to visit them, and they've done a wonderful job with the house. They had people in the kitchen cooking as they would have done in colonial times. And as a plug for them, on December 2nd, they will have an open house again where they're going to have some 18th century glassware on display, so I encourage you to go and visit them. Uh, also in December, the um, Cultural Arts Council is planning on a holiday event, which will be held at the community center. Uh, it, it's a very last-minute rush rush uh, program, so I don't have all the full details yet, but please uh, mark December 9th on your calendar, with, and we will bring you more information as time goes on. Um, the, just to, to talk a little bit about the Magnolia Road project that Mr. Brown alluded to, uh, we continue to work with our, our uh, people in the, in the township as well as with the residents, and we are planning a meeting on the uh, November 12th here at the uh, municipal building uh, for the residents and the people from the traffic department and our new township manager will be there, I'm sure. Uh, to uh, provide them with the options that uh, are have been uh, put forward through an analysis of the, their issues. So we do work with our community when they, they say they have a problem. I have no doubt that Mr. Brown's problem will also be addressed. And uh, just a couple of quick items with regard to the administration committee. Uh, there, there were three items on the agenda. We were interviewing uh, judges for uh, a the position in uh, one of the two judge positions <coughs> here in Franklin Township, and I believe we're going to uh, make that nomination here this evening, uh, the one that was selected. Uh, we also talked about our 
a website. We are looking to uh, modernize our website, and there are some bids out there, and we'll be reviewing and talking about them fairly s shortly. And uh, the last thing I would like to uh, commend Anne Marie McCarthy for uh, focusing on our grants program and having uh, meetings with the various department heads in the township and uh, making sure that they are taking advantage of every possible grant that's out there in order to provide services that don't necessarily have to come out of the township uh, residents uh, pocket so that's my report thank you very much okay thank you councilman james vasanella thank you a few items a handful here. I didn't realize how many. I'm um, going we'll to try to get through them as quickly as possible. A resident came to me recently, uh, a concern uh, about, he was told he had to cut branches, low-hanging branches uh, that interfered with, I believe, the passage on the sidewalk in front of his house. Just for uh, some clarity and some heads up, um, if you have trees that are on your property but close to a sidewalk or street, it's my understanding, and our manager will clarify this for us. For us. Um, those branches need to be above the height of where it would interfere with a person walking, riding the bike, etc. cetera. Um, he actually had asked if, uh, since I believe he's physically unable to do it, if we, the town would consider doing it. I'm gonna explore a program where we can possibly try to uh, look at that for places, people that cannot actually do it. But it is the responsibility uh, for people who have any capability of having it done to keep those. I mention that because uh, this past summer, things have, spring, fall, summer, things have grown incredibly with the weather patterns we have, incredibly. I know I'm pruning things more than ever before. And it is really dangerous when a, a child, older person, anybody's walking or riding a bike. So. And, 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 I, and I commend our town on getting diligent and sending notices to people. We're not out to find people, but uh, please try to attend to it before it becomes an issue. And if you have any questions as to whether it's your responsibility or not, you could address them to myself or, or um, probably more efficiently to our, to our manager, who's an expert in that area. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my phone. Oh, school board elections. This is the first time in Franklin history that the school board elections are in sync with our general elections. Whether you want them to be or not isn't the issue. They are now, so please vote if you're, whether you usually vote or not. Um, you don't like the candidates running for president. Whatever reason you might not come out for a general election, remember, or your school board representatives, uh, three of them are being voted um, uh, three are being voted in on the uh, on election day so please get out there um, and remember to vote for whoever you choose and please look into the candidates I believe there's information out there about them uh, there is a program it is in Montgomery um, I mention it because uh, I think it's a worthwhile program even if you have to drive over to Montgomery for it and that's uh, directed towards seniors called How You Can Protect Yourself From Financial Fraud. I'm sure many of you see new, uh, articles all the time about uh, people and especially seniors being um, basically cheated out of their money one way or the other. It's October 25th, that's two days from now. Um, I believe it's 1030, it's at the Montgomery Center, um, Montgomery Senior Center. Uh, for some residents, it's probably closer to get to the Montgomery Senior Center, perhaps, than, than uh, e even up here at the Municipal Complex. Uh, we've had them before, and, and hopefully we'll schedule them again. But um, And even if you're not a senior, you can go out there, because most of us have uh, friends, relatives, parents who are seniors. And that's on 356 Skillman Road. thought it was worth mentioning. Um, the speeding, I'm not going to get into the aspects of Winston Drive, driving it. Um, most days of the week, I can confer that it is a problem. Uh, we will explore the options brought forward from our, our, our manager and or safety um, personnel, the police department, at the next meeting and try to come up with some solutions. All over town, there's through streets. Please slow down on through streets. Please. Every street, but especially these, these through streets that <laughs> seem to get the most speeding and the most traffic. Sure. Um, Ribbon cutting at the turf field, um, our synthetic turf field at Middle, South Middle Bush Park. I can't remember exactly who. I know the mayor, the deputy mayor, uh, Councilman Wright, Councilwoman Sherman. Councilwoman Sherman, I know she forgot to mention it. I had it written down, so I was only going to mention if you for, uh, forgot to. Anyway, um, 
and, and I believe everyone unanimously supported the building of it, but that was a wonderful, wonderful event. It, it really was. And they played their inaugural game on that uh, day and after we had cut the ribbon. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there. And let's see, is there anything else? Uh, well, if you can allow me one more moment, I just want to again acknowledge St. Matthias. I, I think um, Brian, uh, Councilman Regan touched on it, um, perhaps somebody else, but there are so many programs that nobody has any, a lot of people have no clue that St. Matthias either has started or assists with or consistently sends volunteers, mainly in Franklin, but I thought it's worth mentioning they also have uh, a parish in, that they support in New Orleans. They have a um, uh, uh, home school for women in Africa that they, w they support, funded mainly through the parish, um, Haiti. These efforts mainly focus in Franklin, but literally touch people all over the world. And I cannot tell you, um, it'd have to be an entire meeting to really give you an, a glimpse of, of what they do. And uh, just wanted to, to mention that again. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Kimberly Francois. Uh, I just have one remark. I want to say congratulations to Lieutenant Robert Bob Bonlocker. I was expecting a lot of pomp and circumstance here tonight, mm -hmm. and I didn't get that. I didn't get a speech. I didn't get any of that stuff, but he's, he is homegrown here in Franklin, and it, it just speaks to his personality and the, the level of caliber of this individual. He certainly is no stranger to me, no stranger to this governing body. Uh, he's been around for many, many decades. I've had the privilege of working with him as a former mayor, deputy mayor, now as that large councilwoman. And um, I'm, I'm just excited that he has accepted the position of township manager. He, the level of commitment and leadership that he exhibits, uh, the passion that he brings to the job, and now I know that he will bring to the, the role of township manager, the perseverance that he has, uh, he, we, we, I, I can't think of anybody. We did we did a uh, extensive search to find a township manager, and uh, I think we did a good job by selecting him. Um, I believe that he will set the standard of excellence for our municipal employees and staff, for our businesses, for our residents, for our community. Uh, he, I think he will set a new tone for superior customer service. And he will lead the charge for being responsive to uh, and, and getting things done. And I just, I really um, am looking forward to having a seamless transition, having him on board, and the, and the uh, benefits that he will bring to all of us, including uh, not just the governing body that will work with him one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm, I'm just looking forward to you being here as our township manager for many, many, many years to come. Thank you, Mr. Von Locker, for accepting the position. All right, so you prompted me into a speech. speech. No, you have to say a speech. I, I tried to avoid that. Well, thank you very much for those kind words. And, and I am, in fact, looking forward to many, many, many years in this position. As some of you know, and, and, and I've had the opportunity to speak with you, uh, about this position. I, I, I look at this as the culmination of a career, uh, and, and I intend to finish my career here in Franklin like I began it back in 1985, and, and there are many years ahead of me. So I, I look forward to working with all of you, as I have in the past, and in different positions that I've held in the township, and I think that we need to now like I said before, get to work and, and start moving forward. And, and I'm looking forward to doing that along with the staff members, with the public, with the business owners. And uh, it, it's a great task that I have ahead of me, but I, uh, I am truly looking forward to, to actually rolling my sleeves up and getting to work. And so, you know, tonight starts it, tomorrow the real work starts. And, and that is something that I am truly, truly looking forward to. So thank you for the opportunity. And uh, I, I think we have good things to come. Wonderful. Thank you. I like that speech. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Phil Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Councilman Carl Wright, please. Uh, 
This is from the Housing Authority, uh, Ms. Hazel uh, Burnett Davis, who is the Executive Director. Uh, the completed senior building, 70 units, was successfully leased uh, upon its completion and the certificate of op occupancy was uh, presented. RPM management has been responsive to the residents' concerns for security by adding closed circuit cameras, issuing parking stickers, and placing warnings on illegally parked cars, providing three computers and a printer and computer classes for seniors, a large TV screen, a recreation area, and senior and medical programs. The construction was completed for the family phase, which is 70 units, in July. All buildings have received a CO on our lease by the qualifying returning residents and new renters. The Alfred Caesar Family Community Center is also being equipped with computers and several uh, social services being provided for the families. Uh, they are in the process of scheduling and completing the final HUD requirements and the financial closing activities, hopefully at the end of the year. Um, it's the meetings were canceled last month because Ms. Davis uh, had broken her ankle, ankle and the leg or something way around there. And uh, we didn't have meetings for, for that month, uh, October and going back to September. So those <coughs> are the minutes that we have for that uh, particular uh, item. Also, one more thing, Mr. Mayor. On the corner of Battle Place and Davis Avenue, we have weeds. We have weeds the size of maybe four feet. And whenever we go down, I always ask who owns that corner uh, where the weeds are. Some people will say we own it. Some people will say the uh, car wash owns it. But in either case, don't care who owns it. Uh, I think that's a, uh, an area that we need to look at. And the grass, I think, needs to be cut uh, at four feet. Uh, to the township manager, if I can just put that on your little plate there. And I know you have a lot of things being put on your plate, but it's a beautiful day. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Phil Kramer. Thank you. Um, I, too, would like to congratulate the um, new township manager who the last few days I've been calling the almost township manager. Um, and I just, one anecdote, I'm not sure if he knew of it, but when we first started um, talking about manager, uh, I called Ken Daly to see if he had any thoughts, I, I call him periodically, on how we should do this, what we should do, and he put a little bug in my ear, namely your name. and. Um, that meant a lot when, when he recommended you. So um, uh, he, he's a wise man, and he, he predicted, well, I, I don't know that he predicted we would pick you, but he thought that would be a great choice. Um, the other thing is uh, the Middlebush Park. Um, being on council, besides the responsibility and the work, it, it, I have to say it's one hell of a ride. It, mm -hmm. It's it's an amazing thing because you get to do things you, you never thought you'd do. You go to things, events you never dreamed you'd be at. And um, the opening of that first field in Middlebush Park, I, I knew I'd be happy about it, but I was amazed at how happy I was and the smiles on the kids faces and the parents faces it, it really it really was a very uh, worthwhile thing and um, Councilman Wright pushed and pushed to get that done very quickly all of council um, has worked on that and I men as I mentioned there a man named Scott Ludwinson who is one of the presidents co-president of the uh, park asked us a question a few years ago, or a, a year ago or so. I know you're trying to plan it out and get everything right, but is there anything you could start on now, right now, that you know eventually will be in the final plan? And it was one of those questions that you kind of made you go, why didn't I think of that? And that park opened, and we were playing on it last week um, because of that question from that person. So he, he uh, gets uh, an extra special uh, thanks for it. Two and a half years ago when 
the new council members came on, one of the very first things I did, in fact, it was the first thing I did at the second meeting we had, was say, we need a plan, we need to go out and, and, and get a plan for all of our recreation money so that we know what we're doing. And some people balked at it because, well, why can't we just do this now? Why can't we do that? Because, and my answer was because I want to know how much we have, where the plan was going, so that we could make good decisions, responsible decisions on how to spend the money. And because of that, now that field's in, another turf field's going to go in, three more grass fields, lights, a, um, um, a concession stand, a pavilion, and while we're working on that, we're starting the planning for the pocket parts in the fifth ward. We're starting the planning for Catalpa down in the first ward. Um, and, and now that we've got this plan, things are going to keep moving. So um, it's probably not right for a politician to say, I told you so, but I told you so. This is, this is something we've been working on. It's coming and it's going to keep coming. And I, I love to say I told you so because I think everyone out there uh, is happy about it. So thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so thank you. And two, uh, two, two points. Um, one is uh, in the, the Middle Bush Park was a good thing. I just want to give some credit to a couple of people years ago who, who were council people. Harry Weber, Alex Kuzma, Kimberly Francois was on the council back then. But they pushed to get that land when the de it was being developed and to have it set aside for some point when uh, it could be put together. So, yes, things are good and they happen, but there's a genesis of things and I think they deserve some credit too. And number two, I'm going to use the opportunity to make the first, for the first time, point out where our new manager was wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Years ago, when uh, it was Lieutenant Vornlocker was being promoted from sergeant to lieutenant, and it was filled with people and police officers, oh. it was a very nice event. I think afterwards, I was standing around there, a couple people, and he said, this is a nice event. People came out. It's probably the last promotion I'm ever going to get. <laughs> <laughs> so so th thankfully, you weren't completely right on at that point. <laughs> not, not a bad reason to be wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I say that tongue in cheek, of course. And that, that concludes my comments. So now we go to council discussion items. And we have 11A, sidewalk along Route 27, Franklin Park area. Councilman Ted Chase. Yeah, a, a resident of Franklin Park contacted me requesting a sidewalk along Route 27 in the Franklin Park area. Uh, I suggested that, of course, this is a state highway. I suggested that he contact Assemblyman Shivakula's office for assistance in asking the State Department of Transportation about this. He did, and Ryan Lemansky of that office provided me with the necessary details for a formal request to the state. Uh, the DOT wants a formal request to be sure that the plan is in accordance with township planning. And of course, we have the pedestrian feasibility study uh, by Orth Rogers in 2009 for the length of Route 27 right from uh, New Brunswick, north of Howe Lane, all the way to Kingston. So we, we have a good deal already. Uh, they want, uh, so it's certainly in accordance with township planning, and actually the stretch uh, from really Cordelieu Lane to all the way down to Beekman Road is high priority in this plan. Uh, the DOT wants a letter providing, quote, justification as to why the sidewalks are needed with a map with specific mileposts and, if possible, any crash or fatal de data which will help determine the need, unquote. Uh, <laughs> you really uh, don't quite know how to say this, but 
much as one would hate to have had anyone killed along there, apparently it would help us if somebody had been <laughs> killed along oh, there. Uh, but in any case, I just wanted to ask the council for authorization for staff to prepare uh, such a letter. As I say, we've, we've already got a lot of data on it anyway, but things like the, the official mileposts markings uh, that they need are not so readily available. Uh, if I don't know what the chances are of getting this from the state or getting some of it, but uh, it doesn't hurt to ask. I'll support that, Councilman Chase, if you'd like mm -hmm. to make a motion right now. Well, I'm making a motion. To I'll second the motion. Ask, you know, I'm sorry, if you want to repeat Ask the, the manager to have staff prepare uh, such a letter, utilizing the pedestrian study we've already had. Second that motion. Which the manager has already provided me with, one of his first official acts. Okay. If no other discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion is carried. Ken Fornlocker, you'll let us know. So noted. Thank you. And we will have the letter prepared, and uh, in, in addition to the, the data from that report, we can also uh, gather the data from the police department on accidents. Exactly. That will be done. Thanks. Right. Thank you, Councilman Chase. We get 11B, Southern Park, Councilman Carl Wright. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, this is real simple, real easy. It's only two lines. Um, next thing on, the, we had the... Uh, recreation needs assessment done and we're moving on to the southern park Catalpa but one of the things that we need to do before anything gets done is to find out what land we can build on and what land we can't build on where's the wetlands where's it sitting what is the, the outline of it uh, before we can even begin to sit down and discuss it so with that mr. mayor I'm going to ask, oh, and we have the people on, on, on staff. They're already on retainer. And you, the money that we're going to use is open space money, so we're not coming out of pocket on this deal. Um, I make a motion that we uh, send to the manager or give to the engineering department or send to whoever has to be done uh, the, uh, that we need testing done uh, on wetlands to see where we can build. Formally, it's it's a wetlands delineation is what we need done, and I will second the motion. And Ted Chase is on the planning board, so he knew exactly what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If no other discussion, um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion is carried. Very good. Very good. My, those two points were made extremely succinctly, but but thoroughly. Okay, item Mayor, 11. Oh. I, I just wanted to inform Councilman in Wright Walker. that in anticipation of him requesting that in at tonight's meeting, and as what was, I believe, part of my proposed 30-day plan for my first 30 days as Township Manager, um, one of the things that we discussed was Catalpa and, and the, the First Ward Park. Um, so I've already instructed our township engineer to begin to put together the data for our engineering firm to do the LOI as Councilman Chase mentioned as well as a, a subdivision that's necessary for the property owner and a concept plan for the park so that we can stay on schedule so that's why that's exactly why we hired you <laughs> well, I'm glad you feel that way you're, you're so working already I that, 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 that that part of this project is underway thank you very much okay thank you um, so we, uh, item 11, see additional fire prevention officer we had done earlier. Mm -hmm. Councilman Regan suggested that move up. You didn't think so now we get to item number 12, approval of the minutes. So we have minutes for the following. Special meeting, October 5th, 2012. Executive session, October 5th, 2012. Executive session, October 9th, 2012. Work session, regular meeting, October 9th, 2012. Special meeting, October 16th, 2012. Executive session, October 16th, 2012. So uh, there's six items upon which we'll be voting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. <coughs> so moved. 
moved. So Second, moved. Moved and seconded. Ms. McCarthy, please poll the council on approval of the minutes. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes, but I have to abstain for the executive session minutes for October 9th in the work session because I was on vacation that week when all that wonderful stuff was going on. So I missed the ribbon cutting and all the events. But yes, for the rest of them. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Regan? Aye. Yes, um, except for I abstained from the October 9th meetings as I was not here for them. Councilwoman Sherman? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, motion is carried. Uh, we now come to item number 13 on the agenda. That's approval of the warrants. The warrants are the bills that we pay. So warrants in the amount of $8,442,764.96 on October 23rd, 2012 are presented to the Township Council for payment. Is there a motion to pay the warrants as read? So moved. Move. Second. Moved and seconded. Ms. McCarthy, please pull the Council on payment of the warrants. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Regan? Yes. Councilwoman Sherman? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, motion is carried. Now we come to um, our public hearing. Usually ordinances to go into law vote on twice. They usually, usually vote on once. And then uh, the meeting or two after that, they will be voted on a second time. That's, and at that point, anyone from the public can comment on them. And if they pass that second time, they will go into law. So what we have today is it's item 14A on the agenda, ordinance number 3992-12. An ordinance amending the code of the Township of Franklin, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, more particularly Chapter 260, Parks and Recreation, add a new Article 9, Synthetic Turf Field, Section 260-42, Regulations. And then especially since we have our new turf field in Middlebush Park, it just puts forth regulations on what is and mostly what is not allowed on turf fields, you know, items such as spitting, etc. The foregoing ordinance, sorry, wrong. The township attorney has approved the affidavit of publication and a public hearing is in order. Is there a motion to open the meeting for public hearing on this ordinance? So move. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion is carried. Meeting is open for a public hearing on this particular ordinance. Anyone interested in speaking, please raise your hand. Seeing no one come forward, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we close public session. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion is carried. Public hearing is closed on this ordinance. Thank you. Mm. Is there a motion for final passage of the ordinance and publication in accordance with law? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. There's a moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, please poll the council on I'm, item I'm 14A. I, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm I, sorry. Pardon me. Deputy Mayor Kramer, please. I have one question out of curiosity that just occurred to me. Um, is this applied to all turf fields in town, like the BOE turf field? Do we have jurisdiction no. over that? No. 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 This no. Is just, no. just township turf, turf fields. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Ms. McCarthy, please pull the council on item 14A, ordinance 3992-12, please. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Regan? Yes. Councilwoman Sherman? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay. Motion is carried. Next we have two ordinance introductions. First is 15A, Ordinance 3993-12, an ordinance amending the Municipal Code Book, Chapter 115, Dogs and Other Animals of the Township of Franklin, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, with the repeal of Article 5, Cats, and the amendment of Article 2, Dogs and Cats. Uh, a little while ago, the council had voted to do some licensing of cats. If they're outside cats, inside cats were exempted at the time. Inside dogs were exempted too, and uh, we're told the state does not allow that. You have to license a dog no matter what. So this basically puts an inside dog, which 
think it was pointed out to us, I don't know if they exist anyway, <laughs> back in to be licensed. Did I, is anything else? Also, farm dogs, I think, Mayor. Basically, you, we, you, you can't include the dogs in any of these exemptions, uh, if I remember correctly. And we had a handful of exemptions for cats. Um, hopefully, this will be the last amendment to this ordinance. Okay. That's correct, Mayor. Well, I don't know if it's the last amendment. But <laughs> well, I but should say, what? I think we all like it the way it is, hopefully. But legally, the rest we won't of have statement to. statement was correct. Anyway. I mean, legally, we won't have to amend it for okay. legal purposes. The foregoing ordinance is presented to the Township Council for adoption on first reading, posting publication in accordance with law, and public hearing and final adoption on Thursday, November 8th, 2012, at 7 o'clock p.m. here at the Municipal Complex. Is there a motion to introduce? So moved. Second. Move second. Madam Clerk, please pull the count on item 15A, Ordinance 3993-12, please. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Regan? Yes. Councilwoman Sherman? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, motion is carried. Now we have the second and last of our ordinance introductions. It is uh, item 15B on the agenda, ordinance number 3994-12. And this is an ordinance amending the code of the Township of Franklin in the County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, more particularly Chapter 384, Water, Article 4, Water Rates and Meter Charges. And uh, well, attorney will help me if I don't have it quite right. A developer is putting in an 8-inch meter, which we don't have in our records. And this sets a minimum charge of $1,416 a quarter. All meters, all water is, has a minimum charge because we're still paying for the system and our personnel. And this is usually just for developers and larger apartment complexes. That's correct, Mr. Reno. Thank you very much. Mayor? Yes, um, Councilman Vassanella. Um, just want some clarity. It, it does or doesn't increase the water rates across the board for residents? Uh, does Mr. not. Renown? No. It does not sustain no. by charge. It, it's only adding for the 8-inch meter. Correct. So, right, so it doesn't affect anyone across the board. It actually includes, I guess, the 8-inch meter, which didn't exist in our records because no one's Correct. had one. So where it says water rates, that's only... That's just, I guess, the name of the... That's the name of the ordinance. Yeah, because just wanted to... The article. That's the name of the article, the article missed. in the okay. ordinance. Right. Thank you. No, but good, good point, of course. M Mr. Mayor. Count Councilman Regan. So, so what was the... Other than the developer had an eight-inch meter, what was the why was that needed? Like w something obviously must have been done differently for the first time, or for the first time. No, actually, there it. used to be a charge for the eight meter, and somewhere along the line, it got deleted out of the ordinance and needed to be put back in. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, and specifically, someone is building that's going to utilize that. And we want to charge yeah. him yeah, I assume that. I, I was just wondering <laughs> if it was the first time and we didn't have it, I was wondering, like, did we approve some larger <coughs> type apartment building or, or something that forced us to, to add it? That's, that's what I wanted to get an understanding of. It's the, the, I think the need for it is the Avalon um, uh, project. Uh, they're, they're getting metered all through one pipe, um, and that's why it was added. Right. Okay. Any other discussion? The foregoing ordinance thank is. You. Oh, thank you. The foregoing ordinance is presented to the Township Council for adoption on first reading, posting publication in accordance with law and public hearing and final adoption on Thursday, November eighth, twenty twelve, at seven o'clock p.m. at the municipal complex. Is there a motion to introduce? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Madam Clerk, please pull the council on item fifteen B. Ordinance 3994-12, please. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? I know where we're at. I, I just had a, a question. Can, can you pass and let me? Deputy Mayor Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Regan? Yes. Councilwoman Sherman? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. And Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have our consent agenda. Consent agenda is items basically of a 
routine nature, which are voted on in one vote. It's any council person's prerogative to take anything off for a separate vote. So we have items 16A through 16O. They're listed on the consent agenda portion of this meeting. They're presented to the Township Council for adoption. Is there discussion or a motion for the consent agenda? I make a motion that we accept the, the consent agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion, et cetera? Ms. McCarthy, please pull the council on the consent agenda. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Regan? Yes. Councilwoman Sherman? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, motion is carried. Next we come to item number 17, old business, uh, specifically board and commission appointments, of which we have two. One is appointment of municipal court judge, which I believe administration committee spoke to several candidates, several being three. So mm -hmm. is there a comment on this input? Uh, if I may, we... Uh, Councilwoman Sherman? We had uh, three excellent candidates. It was not an easy decision to make, um, but we, uh, we did indeed make a decision. Uh, someone who has served uh, as a judge on an interim basis here in Franklin Township uh, has an excellent uh, uh, reputation and uh, someone that we are very confident in who will do a wonderful job for Franklin Township in the future. And I'd like to nominate Marie Del Valet Koch for the position of a municipal judge. Okay. Any other discussion from administration committee? No, no just uh, Mayor. Councilman Bassanella. Yeah, no, from what I know, it's a good recommendation. I just want to make sure for clarity that uh, I believe Ms. Sherman, uh, Councilwoman Sherman, is suggesting that the administration committee is recommending to council to appoint. Yes. And I just, I, yes, I, I, I know you know that. I just wanted to be now, clear yes. so people in the public. Certainly. And, uh, you know, we have a process that allows the committee to make recommendations and all of us get to review those. And uh, I personally agree with it. So anyway, move forward, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, a, a couple things from um, my perspective here. Since I, I wasn't on the committee, it was suggested to me that I speak to the candidates, which I did, I gave them all a call. And I, I, I have to say, I, I found three very impressive candidates. I was hoping one would rise to the top in my mind, and they, they were all very good candidates. And also, I'll, um, a, a good concept from the administration committee, I don't know if this was on purpose or spur of the moment, I think one member couldn't make it, so another council person sat in, which I think is a good concept. If any of our committees don't have anyone, I think all of us should, if we have the time and inclination, sit in on those extra meetings. I think that's a good, a good point also. My, um, I, I'm not going to ask you to go over it here. Even if it's, um, I guess we can discuss this as candidates come through. I, I, I wasn't sure what the recommendation was, if I had known ahead of time who and why you know, if that were the case, and I guess I could have called to ask also, then you know, I get a heads up on what, what's the best thing. I don't want to go over anyone's qualifications here, but okay. And finally, I think it was a good concept to be interviewing the candidates. I like that concept a lot. So very good. So I'll take that as a nomination for, I'm going to say this right, Maria Del Val Koch. Koch. It's Koch. It's, it's Koch, I Yes. Okay. I'll second the nomination there. Okay. Move. <laughs> okay. Are there any other nominations? Okay. If not, um, if um, we could, um, if there's a vote for Maria Del Val Koch by acclamation, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion is carried. Congratulations to... Her honor, and um, we wish well the other candidates. Miss McCarthy, you'll personally tell them yep. what 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 went hot, what where they stand, and that uh, they they receive compliments also. Okay, so next we have item number 
17A2, Cultural Arts Council appointee. Um, Councilman Sherman? Yes, Mr. Mayor, there, there seems to be a misunderstanding. I uh, have not even spoken to Mr. Uh, uh, Richardson as yet or Melek. Uh, I was just looking for his resume, so uh, we're, we're not ready to make a nomination yet. So please uh, remove that, if we may, from the uh, agenda. Okay, absolutely. Now, now here is... Um, uh, usually, okay, we're going to go into executive session. Usually, <coughs> uh, actually, uh, ask, ask your indulgence while I speak with the, the attorney, Mr. Rendo. Um, no, we got to come back. So we have to go to Okay. Okay, pardon me. Just wanted a clarification. Usually, we go into executive session at our meetings. And that concludes it, and our filming stops, because all we do then is come out of the executive session and vote to come out of the ex executive session and adjourn. However, today, we may take action on the item of executive session. So we're not going to stop the filming. We'll have some nice interlude. I'm not uh, be creative. And so when we come out of executive session, again, we may take action. So. Is he going to, uh, Mr. Mayor? Okay. Oh, Councilman Wright? Is he going to play classical music during this <laughs> interlude or something soothing? Um? I, I, when I sing, I hit the right notes about 60% of the time. I could uh, try. Oh, hey, listen. Go for it, dude. Okay. <laughs> uh, none of us can perform. We've got to be in executive session. Okay. So, so we've got, we have uh, an, uh, uh, a resolution calling for executive session for contract negotiations, FMBA. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution for executive session? So moved, Mayor. Second. Moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, please pull the council on going to executive session as shown in the resolution. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Regan? Yes. Councilwoman Sherman? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, we're going to go into executive session, and then we come out, we'll explain if or if not, we'll be taking action. Okay, we were in executive session for the reason of contract negoti negotiations, FMBA. Is there a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion is carried. Um, we were talking about um, <laughs> our FMBA contract. That's for our dispatchers and fire officials. We are now at item number 19 on the agenda. Res resolutions put on separately. We've got resolution 12-516. Authorize. FMBA Local 88 contract for the period July 1st, 2007, yes, 2007, through December 31st, 2013. Is there a motion to adopt this resolution? So moved. Move. Second. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, please pull the council on adoptions resolution number 12-516 to authorize the FMBA Local 88 contract July 1, 2007 through December 31st, 2013. Please. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Regan? Yes. Councilwoman Sherman? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, motion is carried. We come to item number 20 with no further business, which is to adjourn. Motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion so to moved. adjourn. Second. Okay. Moved and say all in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed abstain. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Have a good election day.